corporations have a bad image in a lot of people's minds, but in fact, they can be an extraordinary force for good. And that's, yeah. uh, that's the part of business that I love about the natural foods industry. Um, yeah. And I love being part of that. And that's why I started this business. Um, that's yeah. the motivation that keeps me going. Uh, not to, you know, I don't have the classic, oh, I got to make a lot of money kind of, that's why I probably, I'm not selling out. I'm not doing all those things. I'm not <laughs> going to sit in the ocean, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm still trying to bring health to people's cup. <laughs>
um, achieve what we call, you know, the, the goal is optimal health and, mm. uh, and they help your body do that. So now we have um, over 36 flavors, lots of them, <laughs> more mm. than I imagined when I first wow. started the Chino. Yeah. Um, and some of them are more tea-like and some of them are more coffee-like. Mm -hmm. And you can brew Ticino like coffee in any kind of coffee maker, but we also have it in tea bags so you can steep it just like tea. Wow, yeah, and I think I've used mostly the, uh, just the just the plain chicory. And I, I saw, I've yet to try some more of your flavors, but they look really... Hasn't Melissa sent you any? That's terrible, we have to remedy I, that. She sent a couple, but... Yeah, no, yeah, you should definitely rectify anyway, yeah. Do, and do you're that. more of a tea drinker than a coffee drinker, so I would send you our tea bags. Awesome. Um, and we have these great sampler boxes where you can taste a whole bunch of flavors in one box, oh. so we'll send you some. Oh, yeah. sweet. Uh, awesome. Well, I will not uh, to argue with that. Use that. <laughs> awesome, yeah. Um, and just to explain to our audience, whoever's watching, um, Galen on the, uh, the other screen is Carolyn's son. And it is the middle of the business day, so he's running around. And Galen's at the office. I'm actually at yeah. home doing some writing today, so I'm, yeah. I'm, you know, there he, there he is. But yes, Galen is my son, and he was right, six yeah. years old when I started Ticino. Wow. Galen also spent um, a number of his early childhood years traveling with me because I've always been still continuing to source herbs. Mm. Um, and at that time, because um, Galen was young, I decided to stay close to home and I specialized in sourcing rainforest herbs um, in oh, Central wow. America. Wow. And that was really lucky in many ways for me because it led me to being introduced to a roasted seed that the Maya drank as a roasted beverage, right? Is it the Ramon? Never brought to yes. the Americas. I love that stuff. Ramon. Yeah. Yeah, that's the Ramon seed. I know exactly. we might have to uh, do another collaboration with you to incorporate some Ramon seed, Oshri. We could do yeah, it. I'm, we have I'm it down. as a we have it as a flower, not just as a granule. Um, so mm -hmm. we we can do that. But yeah, so Galen used to travel out with his little backpack on, you know, and we'd go out into these villages and he'd sleep next to it. Chickens really like Galen. They used to nest like right in his head. <laughs> I don't know that we need to get into this story right now, Mom. <laughs> no, I, I like it. Keep going. We had a lot of fun. So here he has grown up and since he graduated from UCLA, he's mm -hmm. been part of Ticino and he's traveled all over the country um, working with our brokers and has become yeah. our VP of sales. Awesome. But he earned his way. I didn't yeah. just give it to him out of the gate. <laughs> no, I can vouch. I can vouch for him because whenever I have spoken with him, just for when I call for business, uh, he's always awesome to talk to. So, well, thank I, you. I get it. Yeah, yeah, it's a good industry to be a part of, and it's been really rewarding to contribute to what I to what I had watched my mom develop for so many years as a kid. You know, yeah, I didn't know that I was going to get involved as teaching professionally. Um, even through college, it wasn't part of my plan, but yeah. she managed to uh, rope me into it, um, and I'm I happy did. that she did. It's Good. been uh, it's been very rewarding and and super, um, yeah, just super cool. It's a great industry to be a part of too. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, well, I'm glad that I'm glad that she roped you in. That's awesome. <laughs> And if you look at the um, behind Galen, Galen, turn your computer just slightly, you can see one of my very first marketing pieces, Ever Dream of a Caffeine-Free Cappuccino. And that, yeah. that painting is a painting that um, we actually had done by a woman who painted all these various uh, uh, parts of our, our lo label, little vignettes <laughs> of European cities where um, I imagine traveling to, I did travel to, but yeah. I put them you on the label. So you yeah, need so me to talk so that we can see me on the big screen now, and then you can actually see it bigger. I imagine. I don't know yeah, how. Yeah, we can see it uh, on my screen. It's displaying as. Let's see. We can. We can oh, cool. That. No, no, that's good. Then I've I've it, got it. Oh yeah, I should go gal gallery. It's like an equal. In, yeah, we all have a, a little. Cool. We all have our own oh, yeah, little rectangle. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> no, I can see it very well. It's beautiful, and yeah, I really, I really like what you guys do with your packaging and um, aesthetically. And and it makes sense too. They're coming from celestial seasonings, so they also have a nice. I think like, it seems like you've you've taken whatever you got there and kind of taken it further. It seems and just made something really really creative and and rare because I don't actually don't know any other brands who do what what you guys are doing. And there's some barley coffees, but no, no, no one else that I've seen is really building. 
You know what I learned um, at Celestial? Look, there are some ingredients that you can drink as a single thing, like coffee yeah. and actual tea, which is one plant that gives us both the black and the green tea and the matcha mm. and everything is, is one plant. Um, yeah. The leaves are dried differently, grown in different regions, but that's one single plant. Yeah. But when you come to herbs, I mean, there are some that are fine. Just drank alone. You can drink peppermint tea, chamomile tea all by themselves mm. and they're lovely. Mm. But if you blend, you really get more exciting flavors. And so I've mm. been a, I call myself now a tea designer uh, or a master yeah. blender or whatever you want to call me. Um, yeah. But that's what I do. So to make mm. Ticino taste like coffee, I researched a number of different ingredients. Chicory is one of them, of course. And mm. then I actually pioneered the Ramon seeds down in um, the mm. Maya Biosphere Reserve because they were not being harvested. They were going to waste, wow. just dropping out of the trees and going rotting on or sprouting oh. into trees on the floor of the forest. So they weren't uh, drinking them or they, how? You know, what happened was, they, so the Ramon tree grows throughout Central America and it's called different names depending on the region it's um, growing in. Mm -hmm. uh, there's different local names for it. Um, and in some regions, they remembered how that, you know, how they drank it, like in Oaxaca, it was still um, strong. But in this particular region that I was working in, which is the, where the Maya Biosphere Reserve is in the Paten region of Guatemala, mm -hmm. um, Guatemala had so much disruption in its culture, it didn't have any pure Mayan villages anymore. Oh. A lot of the people had been settled there from other regions. It, basically pushed into the forest from mm. other regions because they didn't have any land or they were kicked off their land, et cetera. And yeah. so they didn't have the tradition of eating it and it's a zero fat nut. So yeah. you can't just pick it up and chew on it, right? It's right. very hard. Um, right. And thus they thought of it as, you know, animal food, you know, the animals, right. wild animals would eat it and that was that. Um, but so, it was yeah, a traditional drink. We like, eating it. Centuries ago, it was a traditional Drink, yeah, the Maya the food source right. by the Maya. But that, yeah. that's not if you were to go up, up to anyone there, not everyone would necessarily know that. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Wow, that's right. so. You took something that was so you have kind of helped to revive something in the indigenous. Uh, yeah, it's there. now become um, a really important little industry in this area where there's communities that actually make their whole living by um, what they call extracting. Mm -hmm. um, natural ingredients from the forest. It gives value mm -hmm. to the standing forest um, and it doesn't yeah. harm anything in the forest. Yeah. Uh, you actually have to go through quite a bit of permission with the Guatemalan government to be able to get these permissions to extract a natural product from yeah. the forest. Yeah. And, uh, and now we have like women's cooperatives that have uh, uh, started and they're baking um, things with the Ramon flour because the, mm -hmm. the raw flour as well as the roasted it, are both used. Um, the Maya called the tree the corn tree because it's a highly nutritious seed. And now we've um, also helped to get people eating it again, right? So they realized, hey, there's this free food and we're not eating it. Uh, but they didn't know how. So we had to have workshops that taught the women in these various villages um, that live where they have native Ramon trees, not just in Guatemala, but also in other countries like Honduras and Nicaragua, how to eat Ramon seeds. So you guys in Ticino's pioneering that, bringing that into yeah. the communities. Wow. You know, it was our demand. Mm. You know, here we were the gringas, right? Showing up in Guatemala saying, hey, we want those seeds that are on the ground. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and they're then, like, sure. <laughs> I worked with, uh, I worked with some um, groups down there, both government and non-governmental organizations. Mm -hmm. um, and it really took us a long time to both get the permission to uh, be able to do a harvest as well as to figure out the right way to dry it, the right roast even, um, and to bring it up here to North America. So we, wow. yeah, we are pretty proud of the work we did with that because we created another source of income for the people who live in these communities. And there's about um, 500 people involved in the collection now that live in these nine different communities. That's awesome. And, and is there, I'd love to post uh, like a link to that project or, or those programs and below. That's fantastic. And uh, something we really aspire to, I think one thing I'm learning is that actually, you know, they, they say, oh, you know, I, I think it's a stereotype and sometimes it plays out to be true in some cases that as a business grows, it, it can kind of lose its um, spirit or its core values, but it seems like What's become apparent to me, and, and by watching someone like you, 
actually the possibilities and potential to to really project and resonate those core values or even more the more you develop if you really hold tight you know it, it's such a delicate balance because i've seen yeah. you know a lot of entrepreneurs like myself i mean i've been in this industry 40 some years right yeah. so a lot of people like myself you know have these extraordinary companies but then sell them or they get an investment group that brings in a lot of money and then the investment group pushes the entrepreneur aside or that kind of thing and then what I call sort of, you know, the lifeblood, the passion, the, you know, everything goes kind of out of that brand. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's just been the nature of things. People, you know, work hard and then they want to get out and, you know, that kind of thing. But yeah. I happen to still be totally passionate about what I'm doing without yeah, any it. ideas of getting out. And I've got Galen coming along to back me up. So that makes it really great. Yeah, that's the best. That's <laughs> awesome. And using businesses, thankfully within our industry, it's a more common theme, but in general, using businesses as a force for good amplifies the voice so much more yeah. than just an individual, right? So right. that in a sense, it is more powerful if you can maintain that lifeblood and that, um, you know, that yeah. value for doing good for others and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So I think that's what we all need to focus on more in today's relatively corporate society. Yeah, but I really... <laughs> appreciate businesses and appreciate seeing businesses who are really aware of just how what they're doing is affecting people um, yeah that's awesome um, businesses i mean you know corporations have a bad image in a lot of people's minds but in fact they can be an extraordinary force for good and that's yeah. uh, that's the part of business that i love about the natural foods industry um yeah. and i love being part of that and that's why i started this business um that's yeah. the motivation that keeps me going uh, not to you know i don't have the classic oh i got to make a lot of money kind of that's why probably i'm not selling out i'm not doing all those things i'm not <laughs> going to sit in the ocean right yeah yeah <laughs> i'm still trying to bring health to people's cup <laughs> yeah that's awesome and that's why i mean i can tell you just doesn't you know you just radiate with that i think there's something like looking with, with everything all the like crazy stuff going on in the world uh i graduated from school during the 2008 crash so it's the worst job yeah. market and i think just we've really had to look for like meaning because it's not like you can just easily apply for a job in the same way that we could take things for granted and it's forced us to go deeper i think totally um, yeah i i like to think so as well at least um yeah you know we're trying to make that pervasive across all generations and hopefully ours can be one that really leads the way in that yeah, yeah. G Galen, can you speak a little bit to like how your internal process of maybe not necessarily knowing you're going to be involved in the family business and then what transformed in you to? Yeah, to totally. Um, I mean, there are a lot of factors uh, in that, obviously, but um, I was always inspired by the industry, I think from early on, even as a kid. And like, I went to trade shows with my mom when I was like 12 years old. And so, you know, was um, surrounded by, you know, Ticino and other conscious brands, um, I think for a long time before it became a professional choice. Mm -hmm. um, and so I knew already that there was really integrity in uh, the natural products industry, um, not in every single company, but you know, <laughs> in general, uh, more integrity than in, and then other industries. So that was one of the big drivers, um, but also I experienced that firsthand as I, um, you know, would go to these trade shows and talk to people and talk to customers because I also did like demos and Whole Foods when I was in high school. You know, yeah. I talked to customers who, um, who had really had their lives changed in a good way by Ticino. You know, they'd like taste it and tell me about how this product had been such a positive impact for them and helped them through this stage in life or whatever it might have been. Um, and so I also saw how firsthand it was um, impacting people's uh, consumers' lives, you know. Um, and so uh, that played a part in it as well. And then when I was sort of trying to figure out what I was going to do after college, I graduated um, in 2010. Uh, so a couple of years after you. And, uh, and I was sort of did my own thing for a year um, around L.A., um, but was kind of doing some store visits and demos on the side for some income still for Ticino. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, uh, as I was, you know, a year in sort of thinking, I got to make the next move. That's maybe a little bit more in the direction of a career path. Um, my mom actually 
and I say roped me in, it's ironic that one of the things she convinced me to get involved with Teachino was this idea that I could get, uh, the company would get a van that I would drive all over the country visiting stores and doing demos like I've been doing, right? But like a really grassroots sort of marketing style. Yeah. And she said, and along the way, you can camp and rock climb anywhere you want. And I happen to be a really avid rock climber. That's my, you know, personal oh. uh, pa- pursuit and passion. <laughs> um, You're a good marketer. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, so literally, like the pun of roped me in is pretty accurate. Yeah. And that I did take her up on that and had these amazing road trip adventures mm. all over the country in the first 18 months. Um, wow spreading the word about Ticino and, and, you know, doing demos and throwing out samples to people out the windows and things like that. <laughs> and, awesome. uh, and I also camped and climbed in a lot of awesome locations that I would never have had access to otherwise. Mm. Um, and over the course of 18 months, I, I do it in stints. So I'd spend about three months on the road and then I would come back for a month and be home for a little while. And then I'd go another three months on the road, but I drove cross country five different times in a year and a half. And, mm. um, it was just this amazing sort of uh, like crash course into the industry, working with brokers and meeting buyers along the way and all this kind of stuff. And uh, I really was inspired by the direction of things and um, the general movement for people to get more healthy, conscious and understand the value of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, uh, yeah, then, I mean, the rest was just kind of a natural progression and I became our you know regional sales manager and then um, our national sales manager and then our sales director and then our, VP of sales now, um, and have aided in a lot of different steps along the way, but, um, we've made, we've made some really big progress, uh, that's been inspiring to see. And in, you know, since I came on board, let alone since I was a kid, but, um, in the last 10 years, uh, since I got involved and, uh, and so, yeah, all that, I guess, um, that's what keeps me here doing what I'm doing is that, um, it's felt good all along the way. And also I, I always knew that, um, my mom's vision for Ticino uh, was grandiose, uh, to say the least, and still is. Um, yeah. But I knew that I could help get it there. Um, and so mm. I've always wanted to realize that vision that um, as a kid seemed like a really long ways off because we were a small company starting out of my mom's garage. And, yeah. uh, and now 25 years in and 10 years being involved myself, um, we've still got a long ways to go, don't get me wrong. But I think it's starting to be accepted in a more um, mainstream mass consumer way that is uh, that's starting to realize the vision that we had all along. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, are you still rock climbing? Oh yeah, totally. Okay, good. Absolutely. No, that's awesome. for, by far my my main physical pursuit and how I awesome. uh, stay active and uh, I mean all the hiking that goes along with it. But getting out in nature for me is a super key part of my sanity and well-being <laughs> yeah yeah i hear you yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. good and rock climbing um, gets me there for sure yeah um okay so question like so you sold you guys sold me on it i love your stuff but why if someone's watching this has no idea what ticino is and loves coffee uh like why you know why would i want something why different? would they want to drink it yeah, we get that question all the time. I'm happy yeah. to answer it. I want to hear. And um, maybe we can both answer it actually. But my first take is that's fine. You can still drink uh, coffee as much as you want, but it's great to have another delicious beverage in the repertoire. And Ticino is a, it's obviously caffeine free. I don't know if we touched on that already, but it's 100% caffeine free. Yeah. So uh, for people who want bold, robust flavor, uh, like similar to coffee. Um, but don't necessarily want caffeine all the time, it becomes a fantastic natural option that you can drink in the afternoons or at nighttime, right before going to bed if you want. And um, ultimately, most of our customers still also drink coffee, I think. Um, but, you know, there are other customers who real for a health reason or some condition really have to cut out uh, caffeine or a lot of times it's acidity of coffee too. Mm-hmm. Um, really have to cut that out of their diet, in which case obviously Ticino is a natural replacement. But to think of Ticino as a coffee replacement only um, is really doing it, uh, you know, misjustice or whatever. So um, Mm. I just say it's, you know, it's another delicious beverage with a ton of wellness properties that uh, you can, you know, add to the quiver, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well spoken. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I got a little distracted here for a moment. That's um, okay. It makes it more authentic. Asking me for information. 
but yeah, I mean, Galen basically covered it. You know, you, you want to have something delicious always and comforting. Warm beverages, you know, tea and coffee are often looked at as a comfort beverage, right? Mm -hmm. And you drink something warm. Um, but in our case, we wanted it to be caffeine free with a natural energy boost instead of a stimulant. And also um, without the acidity that you can get from both coffee and tea. Um, so Ticino has, um, you know, is, is mild on the intestinal tract, but more than mild, it also is what's called prebiotic. It has, yeah. uh, from the chicory, it has the inulin. Yeah, so, yeah, the chicory that you're using too. You must be familiar with inulin because of, yeah. A little bit, and that yeah. word prebiotic, a lot of people aren't familiar with. They understand probiotics, and probiotics are the living organisms that live in what's called our microbiome, right, our digestive tract. Mm -hmm. But um, the prebiotics are, um, it's sort of simple, simplified to say they're food, but they are food. Sometimes they're not actually eaten by those microorganisms, but they're utilized by them. Um, so I like to say they nourish um, our microorganisms in our digestive tract. And when you drink Ticino, you get a good healthy dose of inulin, which is in a number of foods, but it's highest in chicory of any other plant food. But you know, it's in wheat and garlic and all kinds of things that we eat every day. Uh, mm -hmm. But we don't usually get enough of it in our diet, so that's mm -hmm. why it's really great to drink a cup of Ticino. You get this prebiotic that nourishes mm -hmm. your um, digestive tract. And just recently, because I'm really into prebiotics, I could talk about that for a long time. Yeah. Um, I started a, uh, I developed three new blends that have what we call prebiotic super boost in them. So oh. we've added two prebiotics to Ticino. They're concentrates made from plants. Um, and there are specific types of what's called oligosaccharides that are prebiotics. And one, for instance, is in mother's milk and the other one's in a lot of plant fibers that we eat. And thus they um, also are, because they're concentrated, are giving an even bigger boost to um, our probiotics and our digestive tract. Oh. Yeah, we've been getting- Emergency alert. An emergency alert? Oh. Yeah, yeah COVID-19. Oh yeah. Cases on the rise. Please social distance and wear masks. Uh, okay. You want to check it? <laughs> Is Ventura County not even Santa Barbara telling me to do that? Wow. Well, I mean, yeah, okay. we're, we're doing that. We're social yes, distancing. We are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this is good. And we're uh, wearing masks too, but yeah, it's, it's a weird time to navigate all this stuff. It is. Um, uh, I, I love, uh, so I love the, the non caffeinated component of your of your products i mean that's really the most one of the most besides that, that they taste awesome and they are comforting and like you i also kind of like the taste of coffee it's just what it does you know to my system right. it doesn't work so well and and for, for like and it's actually one of the main points i make when we sell for our carob bars um, right, the carob doesn't have caffeine. We use the cocoa butter, which doesn't have caffeine. Yeah. But, um, and one of our biggest markets is right now is in New York. And I actually love the idea of that we're like playing a role in making New York less caffeinated. <laughs> That's <laughs> like, a good one. <laughs> it really like it really gets me like They're buzzing enough as it, it is. Gets right? me hyped. <laughs> yeah. it gets me unhyped. <laughs> You know, I say two things to people who are like, you know, really uh, basically addicted to caffeine because it is an addictive drug. Yeah. Um, the one thing I say is because people will say, you know, oh, you know, what's the point? There's no caffeine, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'll say, well, what type of time of day do you stop drinking caffeine? Now, mm -hmm. some people tell you, oh, I drink a double espresso and go right to sleep. But most people, the great majority of people will say, you know, I stop it and it can go anywhere from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., you know, or whatever. Mm. And I never have caffeine after that. And so then I say, oh, good. Well, then that's the time for you to drink Ticino. And um, if you do drink, drink caffeine before you go to sleep, you may be depriving yourself of the deep sleep. You may go to sleep, but you may not actually descend into the deep sleep, which is where your body does the rebuild, repair, rejuvenation work. Mm. Um, and so you might do yourself a favor and stop drinking caffeine earlier in the day. Um, mm. So that's the one you know, big thing I say about caffeine. But the other thing I say is that yeah. should you experiment and decide to take yourself off of caffeine, as Michael Pollan, the, um, uh, the author of um, The Omnivore's Dilemma, uh, Dilemma and mm. the recent book, um, How to Change Your Mind, all kinds of things. Michael's written great books. Have you, have you ever read his books, Michael Pollan? Uh, 
No, I've heard of the omnivore dilemma. I haven't read his books yet, though. Great writer and a lot of good stuff about food and looking at, you know, plants and how we ingest them and all kinds of things like that. Mm. Um, actually, my favorite book of his is called Botany's Desire, and he goes through a number of plants, including marijuana, and talks about how they've co-opted humans to spread themselves all over the world. Mm. Oh, <laughs> but, interesting. Yeah. But yeah. he recently did the three months. I'm going to be caffeine free, and he writes about it. It's an mm. ebook. It's not uh, published. He's got an ebook, and he writes mm. about his experience and what he says, which is what everybody says who tries this, is that you get so much more energy naturally without the caffeine. Mm. Mm. Caffeine, and then if you take caffeine, and I know a lot of athletes that use it this way, um, mm. it becomes a real drug, you know, and you really get that boost from it. And you, you know, if you're in a um, athletic competition, for instance, if you don't drink caffeine and then do it right before a ca uh, competition, it really supercharges you and you run longer, et cetera, um, with it. So yeah. that's, um, that's the way to use caffeine as a drug. Hmm. Yeah, it's wow. like a real performance enhancer, if you will. Right, yeah. right. In a yeah, conscious... But it won't do that if you drink it every day. If you drink it every day, you wake up, you feel like crap, and you can't get out of bed, and you think, oh, my God, i got to have my cup of coffee before I can think. And that's yeah. true. <laughs> that's yeah. what happens to you. Yeah. Um, well, that was that was potent. I'm, I'm sure a lot of people are going to appreciate hearing that. Um, a lot of people need to. Um, I have a family of coffee drinkers, so <laughs> that we get we can share with them. Um, and there's do you nothing know wrong something with that. about carob? Right. I'm I'm curious. Have you heard about pinatol and carob? What what pinatol? is it? Pinatol. Pardon? No, no. Tell me about it. Well, since you have carob in your products, you should know two things about carob. Okay. One is that you know carob has a very dark color, and whenever you find dark color, this this is the carob pods. Um, we should be clear that it's not carob seeds that you're using in your um in your bars, it's carob yeah. pods. Yeah. So the pods have this very dark color um, and they're full of antioxidants. So that mm -hmm. dark color in nature is always um, associated with high polyphenols. And mm -hmm. so carob has um, not only just a lot of antioxidants, but it also shares antioxidants in common with tea. So you've probably heard of some of the important antioxidants in tea like the catechins, right? The epicatechins. And carob has those epicatechins as well. Um, mm -hmm. And then the second thing about carob is the pinatol. Now, pinatol is research, but not like hugely researched, which is why you haven't heard about it. But yeah. what research shows is that it makes your cells less insulin resistant. So to explain that, um, when we eat a lot of sugar, right, mm -hmm. our cells start getting what I would call death. They, they've got this message, you know, from the pancreas, hey, there's more sugar out here, you know, absorb it. And the cells are like, ah, I'm full up. I can't take it anymore. I don't want it, you know, go away. And mm -hmm. they become deaf. And then you may feel, you may have plenty of blood sugar ready to feed your cells, but your cells are shut down. And when mm -hmm. they're shut down, then they won't take any energy. And then you experience that as an energy drop and I need to eat. But mm -hmm. in fact, you don't need to eat. You just need to take up the energy that's already in your blood. Mm. So pinatol acts like a little key and it opens up those cells to take in oh. blood sugar again. Oh. And that is why we say the Ticino is naturally energizing. It's partly the pinatol and partly the potassium, but oh. and partly the prebiotic uh, chicory. So it's a complex, but yeah. pinatol is a really important part of that because yeah. people will experience that low blood sugar moment. They'll drink a cup of Ticino and then boom. And they, they don't get that meteoric caffeine, like, whoa, I'm jolted into outer space kind of feeling. Right. But they get that, I'm energized, and it's steady. Yeah. <laughs> what, Galen? You're laughing at me. At least for you, you're jolted into <laughs> outer <am>. space. <laughs> <laughs> Total rocket ship. <laughs> no. um, but no, it's, it's, it's absolutely right. It allows your, uh, your cells to actually absorb more sugar, mm. and that's an energizing activity in itself. And there's uh, also some... Oh, go ahead. We're talking about the natural sugar, the glucose that your liver releases to give right, you right. energy that your cells eat, not right. not sucrose sugar, right? Yeah. Right. Okay, sugar. <laughs> and and in the carob, there is actually some some sugar, some natural sugars in the carob. There is. So, it's, it's naturally sweet. Yeah. Yeah. So that, it is. But it's not yeah. like it'll raise your blood sugar if you eat No, no. Carob. Right. It's actually good for diabetics, even. Um, right. And the reason why it's good for diabetics is because. Yeah. It has the pinnacle, which opens up the cells to take in the natural sugars. And, and when you're saying this, it's 
make me th think of the other name, one of the other names for carob, which is St. John's bread, because St. John's yeah, supposed to have survived on carob. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I bet he didn't yeah. know what pitotal was, but probably knew it worked. <laughs> yeah, and it true. tasted good too. Carob yeah, tastes awesome. delicious, you know. Yeah. Carob, carob in the liquid beverage, I mean, it's not really very well known. We used it. Um, I used it back in Celestial Seasonings too. I've used it yeah. across my career developing teas, but yeah. um, it's not really well known, but it tastes delicious all by itself. You can drink yeah. carob straight. I always blend with it because like I say, I think blending makes everything taste better, but yeah. um, it does taste good. It's Yeah, I've been, I've been like eating the pods, so. Um. Yeah. You should mention the thing about the carob seed too. I don't know if you know this, Oshri, but. Um, I know a little bit about, yeah. Well, what I've always been, so I know that the carob seed they used to make the locust bean gum, but I have no they idea that well. Oh, right, and, I, and how do they? So what's actually the process like of separating the pod from the seeds? Because they're so they you know now there's machines that do that, but the mm -hmm. seed is all along inside the carob pod, and right. they crack open the pod, they remove the seed, and then it's the pod that we're using to roast that tastes like chocolate that has all these antioxidants and pinnacle. But the seed right. makes this gum that's in you know, uh, ice creams and all kinds of things. It's a sort of a stabilizer gum that keeps the cream from separating an ice cream. Right. And, um, and that's, that's locust bean gum. And it's quite good for you. Um, but the seed, the interesting thing about the seed from ancient times, back to the thought of St. John's bread, yeah. is that um, the carob seed is very uniform and it supposedly weighs exactly the same seed to seed. So yeah. they used to weigh out gold yeah. next to carob on a balance beam. I have a few here. Oh, yeah, some seeds. Some, you know, it's a little loose. dark. Lean back something. You oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, here's some carob yeah. seeds. There you go. Yeah. There you go. There's the light. Yeah. Um, so there you go. So, so that seed gave birth to the word carrot. You know how you have 24 carat gold? Right. That's the carob seed. Yeah. Yeah. That I just learned like. 24 right seeds. This. Yeah. That gold or something yeah. like that. And and literally every single carob seed weighs the exact same. Yeah. yeah. So that, that, you know, I have not sat down and weighed these seeds myself, but this is the reputation that it's well, had for centuries, right? <laughs> I'll, do, I'll do another video where I actually I actually weigh them and it's just like, yes, perfect. <laughs> we'll see. And, yeah. <laughs> but I probably need a pretty sensitive scale for that. But uh, but yeah, I mean, they, got look, a good scale. they look uniform. I have to, can I grab something I want to show you? I'll be, sure. I'll be right back. Okay. I just wanted to show you people what a carob pod looks like. And this oh, is yeah. actually a really unique carob pod because it has googly eyes on it. <laughs> so nice. That's your little carob pod character. Yeah. That oh, that's cute. <laughs> that's I love it. Pod. Yeah. So yep. for anyone that hasn't seen a carob pod, there we go. So I have a question, and I know. I feel like I'm taking, I mean, I, I could actually probably talk to you forever. <laughs> this is so interesting. But uh, can you speak to, you know, how do you come up with a recipe that you know is going to wow people and feel good in people's system? What's your process? You know, I, I taste things in my head. <laughs> uh, and I just get inspiration. You know, yeah. I, I know my ingredients very well. I, yeah. I have this thing of, I taste everything, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and so I've, I've been tasting herbs literally since I was a teenager. Um, and, yeah. and then when I go to create something, I, I start to, I, I taste it and then things come to me. Um, so for instance, I just made one of our new um, flavors is of our mushroom adaptogen teas uh, mm -hmm. and coffees is um, mm -hmm. Tremola Tulsi. So I never thought of really putting Tulsi with a roasted background because it's a very aromatic herb. Do you know Tulsi? Uh, do you know what it is? It's I'm, also called holy basil. Yeah, yeah, I do actually, yeah. It, it's yeah. a beautiful herb. It's called the queen of herbs. It's used mm. in Ayurvedic medicine and um, it's, a, it's an adaptogen, right? So it helps the body cope with stress and it um, does all kinds of great things for your body. So I won't go into right now, but. Yeah. Um, so I was making that tea and tremola is this mushroom that is supposed to be great for your beauty and your skin and all of that. Mm -hmm. And I really thought, what is gonna make this like work with a roasted background? Um, and it came to me cardamom. 
and cardamom, in fact, brings out some of the spicy nature in the aromatic um, oils that are within the Tulsi leaf. Mm -hmm. And it relates to the roasted side, because I don't know if you know, but in Middle East, for instance, drinking cardamom in coffee is one of the big things. Yeah, That's yeah. Most favorite, favorite yeah, my dad's favorite from thing. Iraq, so he, um, he does the Turkish coffee with the cardamom. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And so it came to me, and you know, yeah. I'd been kind of struggling with this roasted and aromatic, and I didn't love the taste. And when I put the cardamom in, it went mm. boom. Wow. You know, it was yeah. perfect. It was like Eureka. <laughs> and so yeah. that's that's kind of sometimes how it comes. Sometimes it's just a matter of tasting it. Sometimes it's in my imagination. Sometimes I'm just thinking, thinking, thinking as I taste, and then I get an inspiration, and then it works. Or it doesn't work, and I go on to the next one. Yeah. <laughs> that's how I do it. Yeah, I, I resonate a lot with that. Oh, and crazy. but also, I guess I would just add, it seems like, because I've seen my mom at work in her laboratory, which is our home kitchen. Yeah. Um, and uh, I mean, you do um, formulate to what your own taste buds tell you taste good, right? I mean... I have to please myself. There's no <laughs> question about it. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, sure. I do keep other people's taste buds in mind. So like, well, so that's what I was going to say. So yeah. it's like, as long as it tastes good to you, but then you can also keep in mind more of the sort of, uh, you know, general taste preference. You kind of find something in the middle, I think, that is generally very effective and well received. Um, I've actually found people, yeah. customers over time that have, um, I would call them followed my taste buds, right? Mm. So they will identify teas for other companies that I design and go, oh, I love that tea. Oh yeah, I designed oh. it. Well, I love that tea for this company. Yeah, I designed that one too. Well, I that's have designed over a hundred teas. So oh, it, wow. you know, and that's not including Ticino. So, yeah. so wow. there are a lot of them out there. It's likely you've drank some of the designs in other people's brands that I've, that I've created. So at any rate, but I do find people that kind of follow my taste buds and there are yeah. different kinds of, you know, tastes like there was another really wonderful, um, tea designer who's no longer with us, but um, mm -hmm. Steve Smith has started Tazo and also started um, Steve, Steven Smith Tea Maker. And mm -hmm. he had a really different profile of teas kind of that he liked and I would taste his, I go, oh, there's a Steve Smith blend. You know, you just knew it. Oh, wow. Um, Interesting. And they were different than mine, you know? So, yeah. Huh. But I have, as I say, like with Tea Chino, I have um, some that taste just like coffee, and they're actually a little too coffee-like for me now. Mm -hmm. um, I like, I haven't seen the nut flavors and the spicy flavors and the fruity flavors and all of that, um, and the chocolate flavors. <laughs> yeah. A little bit more than the purest coffee flavors, but I do have the purest coffee flavors for those who want exactly that. Yeah, and then we have other flavors that don't taste like coffee at all. They still might have a roasted background, but like you know. Yeah, no, like nobody like, would say Cordyceps Shazandra tastes like coffee. It right, exactly, and Dan. Yeah, a lot of cinnamon and you know various mm. other things, but it still has. So what that roasted background does is it gives a really full body uh, to yeah. Ticino, and Ticino is delicious with milk in it, you know, or or non dairy alternative, whatever you want to put in, but creamed mm. up, right? Mm. Um, it's really delicious that way, but you can also yeah. drink it black, and many people do. So I started out only drinking it with, I had to have some kind of milk or creamer in it. And now half the time I drink it black. So taste blends mm. change and evolve, and also my blends have evolved, and the ones that are a little more tea-like, I don't put in as much milk sometimes, and sometimes I do. It also is all the mood. Yeah, awesome. just depends. And I just hope, to add one more part yeah. of the tasting of formulas, I do yeah. think it's important that my mom will bring in a variety of renditions of a certain uh, flavor to the office, for example, and we'll have a tasting panel with five of us in the okay. office. Um, and we all have a different take on it because everybody's mm -hmm. taste buds are a little yeah. different. Right. And that kind of feedback, just from four or five people, each person has a different uh, sense of it, um, is really helpful in sort of rounding out what the final product ends up being. Uh -huh. And Galen, have you got inspired to create and experiment a bit? Yeah, um, I've done a little yes, bit. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. I, um, yeah, I've worked on a couple different tea blends. I um, one of my hobbies is home brewing, actually, um, for beer. I also like beer, but um, mm -hmm. I uh, I've brewed some beers that I've added some herbs to that have been really interesting. Oh, and I've interesting. Sort of, yeah, uh, picked my mom's brain on that, and and again, it's just home brew, you know, for personal enjoyment with me and my friends and stuff. But um, but yeah, so I've added some herbs to that. 
and done a couple little T blends on the side uh, for other projects, but um, usually simpler than uh, you know my mom's breadth of knowledge. But um, but yeah, I've done a little bit of creating sure. in that. Well, he's, he's definitely awesome. doing some really interesting things. He's, he's not talking about them yet, but we've got some interesting projects that he's cool. pioneering, which is really a lot of fun for me to just give a little idea here, a little idea there, and yeah. watch him go. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, we got more stuff in the works for sure. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and um, well, there's something, you guys are so interesting. <laughs> That's the funnest part. Glad you're enjoying it. No, it's nice yeah, to have totally. this Hopefully other people find value in it as well. <laughs> oh, for sure, for sure. Um, Galen, one thing we could look at just is that we've just gone through a complete pack change, right? And I think it'd be interesting to show people where kind of where, you, where we were and what we've evolved from. So maybe mm -hmm. you can find two packages. Um, yeah, I got, a, well, I got a few around me right here, actually. In Actually, talking with Melissa, she mentioned, and I didn't know this before, a lot of your packaging is compostable too. Is that right? Yes, not all of it, but a lot of it is. Like these boxes, obviously. These are tea bags, for example. Um, these aren't from the same family, but you can still nonetheless see this was the older style. This is the newer, a little bit more block colors, a little more modern style. This is a dandelion flavor versus this is French roast, but uh, yeah. that's one example. Another one you can see, I actually grabbed this off of an old shelf earlier. This is oh, that is an old one. Old bag, uh -huh. and then this is a coffee bag yeah, with the all-purpose grind in it. This guy is one of the new bags. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I like them both, but I think the direction is good. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. just you know modern. It's modernized it a little bit. The messaging is a bit clearer, and also we found it was really important. I think a really big shift is that we have this beautiful sort of gold lettering here that helps to convey. Uh, the premium quality of tea. Yeah, yeah. This was nice, but you didn't really get that it is a premium product with herbs that are sourced intentionally from around the world and whatnot. Yeah. And, uh, you know, nothing like a little bit of gold uh, glitter to help uh, accentuate that. Yeah. yeah <laughs> and what started us in this direction, um, mm -hmm. what, well, what compelled us, I should say, because we've been thinking about it for a while that we needed to update our packaging, but what compelled us was that we had these two new lines coming out. We have my, the mushroom adaptogen and the prebiotic super boost. And so we needed, we needed a brand architecture. And I would tell, mm -hmm. say that that's really important to think about um, if you, you know, with your products or if anybody's listening to this and they're yeah. developing products, is you really need to think about how that architecture will expand over time. Mm. Um, and so this is very expandable, as it were, um, into new lines that I'll create in the future, hopefully. Um, yeah. But right now, it's we have five blend families, and so we have five different background colors to distinguish one blend family from another, and yet there's commonalities to each one, so you really understand this is all Ticino and mm -hmm. you know all that kind of thing. So yeah, it, uh, I really like the look. We okay. have just been able to get our um, tea bag paper is compostable. Um, our boxes are uh, both compostable and they're are, and recyclable, and they're made from um, seventy percent post consumer waste. Mm -hmm. So that's really good. So we've got those things going. Yeah. Um, but so yeah. far the um, all purpose grind bag with our coffee style bags. Yeah. They are not, we're not there with them yet, but okay. it, it's it'll come along. Uh, you know, we're, I we're think the science is that. developing. I think it is. Yeah. Um, because I, I'm also just super inspired. And I think it's great that you guys are as big as you are and as interested in getting your stuff compostable. It's, I mean, if every, could you imagine if like every company who makes like teas or coffees did that or, or wanted to? Well, the thing that I'm really interested in is um, yeah. is plastics, recycling plastics. Because if you notice, yeah. I don't know about where you shop, but our Whole Foods now, because of COVID, doesn't have bulk bins anymore. They've got little plastic tubs of everything. And every time you go to buy something, it's in another plastic container, right? Yeah. All the berries are in plastic, all the, you know, all these things you want to buy. Yeah. Um, so uh, there's a company that I'm really excited about that uh, yeah. is able to recycle plastic back to virgin um, polyethylene. Wow. So wow. I'm following that company. Okay. And <laughs> I'm super interested in that. Not that we're ever going to put Ticino in plastic because we won't, but yeah. um, I'm a consumer Wonderful. like everybody else. And I want to yeah. be able to feel good about where my, if I have to buy plastic, where that plastic is going. Right. Yeah, and how we can recycle it and reuse it in an efficient manner. 
And we also need to find some other materials that can potentially replace plastic too. That's also yeah. a very important direction. Bioplastics, exactly. Yeah. 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 Well, and that's what's in our tea bag because um, our tea bags oh. are heat sealed. And yeah. so there has to be a fiber in there that will seal. And so ours is called PLA and it's, <laughs> it's made originally, it's, it's, a, um, it's a plant polymer. But the mm -hmm. original source of it is sugars that come out of um, corn. Right. So it's amazing what they can do, right? Yeah. Like they're raw material. Um, and then they can turn them into these polymers. And when we get some political will behind it, um, then we'll get some laws about plastic. I've heard there's some plastic packaging laws in Congress. Yeah. We'll get some money that yeah. you know levels the playing field like we did with solar. Solar wouldn't have survived and developed like it did mm -hmm. if there hadn't been incentives for people to use solar energy to level the playing field with oil mm. for production. Mm. So the same thing yeah. has to happen with plastic. Yeah. yeah, and let's just just to clarify that a little bit, there are a lot of tea bags out there where the tea bag paper itself does have little threads of um of plastic in them or Yeah, plastic. I think that's the that's that's the norm from what I understand. Is exactly. that has that been the norm and so yeah. um people are trying to change out of that. And so, yeah, for no, us, it was really important to avoid that. And that's how you can be a 100% compostable tea bag as well, is that there's no little bit of microplastic in there, right? Right. So, um, yeah, that's where these bioplastics, if you want to call it, or an alternative sealant that's plant based basically can come from. Yeah. 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 Well, it's, it's awesome. There's two things I wanted to ask if um, I don't want to forget. One is, did you, did you, you didn't by any chance create, because for celestial seasonings, the tea I remember the most is, is Sleepy Time. You didn't create that, did you? I didn't create Sleepy yeah. Time. It was one of their very first teas. And yeah. uh, when Celestial Seasonings teas were first created, um, they were created in the mountains of Colorado by uh -huh. uh, basically four hippies picking herbs. Uh -huh. okay. <laughs> so I didn't create Sleepy Time. I have created many other blends for other companies that yeah. have sleep you know, as right, a right. effect using um, the more sedative herbs, but I didn't yeah. do sleepy time. But well, sleepy time really broke, sleepy time and red zinger really broke mm -hmm. the herbal tea category into mainstream America. And uh -huh. um, I'm super proud of having been part of that. Yeah, well, and I just, it's mainly that little bear with a nightcap on there's just- I know, And that, the, the <laughs> just woman who created that was the wife of one of, uh, there were two guys that co that founded Ticino, uh, Ticino, yeah. Celestial. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. she was the wife and she had gone to Rhode Island School of Design. And so uh -huh. she, that was that little bear originally was a little woodcut and uh -huh. she, and the woodcut was pressed onto little Muslim bags with a drawstring top. And uh -huh. those bags were sold by, sewed by the other guy's wife and uh -huh. so Peggy sewed the bags Beth stamped them with the sleepy time bear or the red zinger thunderbolt and then they got stuffed with herbs and off they went to the stores in little tiny muslim bags that was the wow. beginning wow that's awesome <laughs> and those weren't tea bags <laughs> those were loose leaf bags right. oh, <laughs> we that's, didn't have that's tea so bags for quite a while <laughs> huh. so everyone starts somewhere everyone starts somewhere uh, have you heard of something called kiave? It's a carob-like fruit, I guess, it, and it grows in Hawaii. I thought, oh, yeah, cool. I've totally seen these before. Um, I wonder if I know it under a different name because there's certainly a lot of native um, flowers that come. The botanical from, yeah. name, according to Wikipedia, is Prosopis pallida, and it is a species of the mesquite tree. And it's these yeah. long, um, sort of more round, not as flat as a carob pod. A little right. more round pod that's very long. Yeah. The other plant I'm super um, into, we don't use it in Ticino, it's not really a, a tea type of ingredient, is breadfruit. Have you heard of breadfruit? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've seen yeah. that in West Africa. Yeah. Yeah. That's super exciting because, you know, one tree will feed a family for 75 years, <laughs> something wow. like this. Or maybe it was more than a family. It's just really phenomenal. It's output wow. a number of tons a year. Um, wow. And and um, they're super nutritious and oh, there's like they used to be hard to cultivate but now they've sort of cracked the way to do that um, huh? there's a bunch of scientists involved in this from british columbia mm -hmm. and they're really starting to plant bread food all over because it can wow. really um, relieve uh, you know hunger yeah yeah wow That's yeah cool. yeah bread food we we recently did a project with Ticino. we did a roundup 
for a group called the Jungle Project, and they're mm -hmm. planting breadfruit trees. And so we made a contribution to their um, project to plant breadfruit trees in wow. Central America. Amazing. You guys yeah. are like, you're, you're like an encyclop you have encyclopedic knowledge. <laughs> I'm just into this stuff. You know, I mean, other people do all kinds of other things, right? But yeah. this is what I'm into. And I have been, I, I got inspired um, actually as a teenager reading mm -hmm. books by a woman named Juliette de Barclay Levy. And uh, she was an herbalist that traveled all over the world. She lived mm -hmm. with nomadic groups. And mm -hmm. I read her books and they just like, lit me up you know and yeah. i'm like wow if she can do this so can i you know and yeah so you know, that's how i got started that and yeah. the celestial seasons and i kind of converged and away we went amazing um can you give like any some kind of closing call to action as as a as a matron of health and entrepreneurship and uh creative ingenuity in the natural foods industry well, what I would tell you is that, look, you know, a cup of tea is, or a cup of coffee, is water with plants infused in it. That's what they are, coffee and tea. We're infusing mm. plants into water. And when we're doing that, we're bringing the nutrients in those plants, and some of them are micronutrients, and they're in small dosages when we're infusing them into water, right, rather than eating a big plate of something. Mm -hmm. But... It's very bioavailable because it's infused in the water. The water immediately goes into our system. And when you're doing that, you're actually enhancing that experience of drinking water for your body. And plants have evolved with our cells, including the mitochondria in our cells, for thousands of years to be like keys, you know, to go into our cells and give them exactly what they need to be healthy. Mm. We don't have many sources any longer of um, a lot of different plants that we eat. We're not out hunting and gathering and foraging. Um, we're eating, you know, a certain group of plants that have been hybridized and grown for food, right? Yeah. So the yeah. one place that you can get these unique polyphenols, these unique antioxidants, and all these other compounds, polysaccharides, you know, I mean, it just goes on and on, right? The one mm -hmm. place you can get that is in the plants that you put into the teas or the coffees in your cup. Mm. So I say, don't, I mean, not that I say don't drink water, but don't just drink water, yeah. right? Drink, yeah. drink water, hot or cold, that you've infused with these extraordinary plants, many of which are wild harvested. So now you're getting this array of micronutrients that you would not get any other way in your diet. Mm. Mm. So it's like a way to supplement your diet through herbal beverages, basically. Yeah. Um, and it's really quite yeah. extraordinary. I've been listening to my customers and my customers for other tea brands, right? For mm -hmm. years, right? 40 some of them now. The effect that they have in the body, even in these small microdoses, are really quite extraordinary. Um, mm -hmm. And that's what's so nice too, is that in these microdoses, they don't do harm, right? It's not like, oh, I had this thing and, you know, whatever, it's, whatever. They, they are just small microdoses that gently adjust our bodies, go along with our diet to create optimal health. So um, I say, you know, as many plants as you can get and the place that you can get the widest variety is through your herbal teas and your herbal coffees. Mm. Wow, beautiful. I really, uh, I, re I really, really, really appreciate you guys taking some time for, with me today and, uh, and uh, look forward to sharing this and, uh, and I look forward to meeting you both at some point too. We look forward to meeting you, and it's been our pleasure to be part of your um, broadcast today. Thank yeah. you. And Thank your you journey so in your own product development. It's so cool that we can help contribute to that. And I think, yeah, that, um, you want anybody well, tasting? We sign up. Yeah. Just send yeah, us some. Oh, yeah. Taste. oh, yeah. Tell us what. So, what do you think about our care bars? Last plug. <laughs> of course. I've totally enjoyed them. I love them. Yeah. They're delicious. Yeah. I like the packaging too. It looks super, uh, you know. Um, what I'm trying to say, inviting. It looks really inviting, oh, and nice. I've tasted them, and they really were delicious. I think I liked the one with chicory in it actually uh, the most when I tried it, because Melissa had uh, uh, you know a variety of them. You're right. Yeah. But super good, and uh, yeah. And they I go would, well with ticino. And they definitely they really, go well with ticino. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they do. They really do. Yeah. I think there's room for more exploration too of how to sort of incorporate some other unique ingredients to continue to broaden your flavor profiles. 
you know? yeah i think so. yeah yeah we should we should chat about that soon actually that'd be cool sweet sweet awesome all right. cool all right well you all have a beautiful weekend and thank you so much and look forward to being in touch thank thanks, you Leslie. too thanks right. for having us have a great thank weekend you. you too bye bye, bye. Mm hmm.